Discussion. Uh, we're discussing Mandalorian. Mandalorian season three uh, it is coming, people, uh, pretty soon. Pedro Pascal is collecting all those nerd checks. He's got the sci fi nerds, he's got the fantasy nerds, he's got the video game nerds, he's got everybody. Um, he is getting he is getting them daddy checks. Uh, Just a daddy on HBO and a daddy on Disney Plus. So, what were some of your thoughts on the Mandalorian season three trailer, here, Nick? Uh, Mandalorian, I love the that we're getting back uh, into Mand- Mandalore. Go, hopefully, going a little bit more deeper into into that whole uh, culture and that whole uh, warrior nature. Especially now that we finally have the whole escort mission with uh, with Grogu done. So now we can go deeper into Mando's backstory, into uh, the culture of it, and possibly into the conflict between him and. Uh, and uh, uh, Katie Sackhoff's character from last season. I'm blanking on the name. Oh, Bo-Katan. Mm. Yeah. And also, I think that at some point during this season, just for no reason at all, have an episode with just Boba Fett and not feature the main <laughs> at all. Just a, just a, just a little payback yeah. for a uh, book of Boba Fett. Yeah. You know, <laughs> get his, get his opportunity back. Yeah. Uh, get his look back. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, is this supposed to be somewhat the final season of the show, or is it coming close? I thought, like, uh, they... I, I honestly don't know, I, because you really think Disney is gonna cancel this show, this one that is basically, like, one of the few things that's keeping Star Wars afloat, at least, uh, at least with the mainstream, because as much as, uh, Andor is beloved by, by critics and by fans of the, fans of the franchise... It did not get a lot of uh, viewership. Mm. Yeah, uh, which is a shame because uh, we did Andor. Uh, me and Dust review that, and I love Andor. I think Andor is probably one of the best things that Disney's done with Star Wars uh, since they've had it. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I do absolutely love that show. So, um, yeah, so The Mandalorian, I mean, obviously still looks incredibly gorgeous uh, in the stuff they do. You see a lot of these different locations. Um, possibly going to see a little, bit, a little bit more of Grogu's backstory um, fully more explained of how he escaped the uh, the Order 66 um you know how that kind of happened uh there's possibilities that maybe we're gonna see darth vader this season which i wouldn't like really uh seeing him but as some you know thoughts mm-hmm. about that kind of rumors kind of going around uh and exploring more of the mandalorian kind of uh, uh mythology i think is interesting expanding upon that uh you know the different kind of stuff there like you say bo uh with katie sackoff's character um, but I tell you, the one thing I am most excited for, you know what that is? What is that? Uh, Gloop Gloop Shitto. He's going to be in it. You see him? He's going to be a Mandalorian. <laughs> uh, you got good old there, uh, 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 Bo- uh, Boba Frick or whatever his name is. He's going to be in there. Oh, this little fucker. Yeah. Um, who's, yeah, he's going to be showing up. Yeah. I guess is this a character now that's, this is what they're doing. Is like their new thing now. They're going to just, because he's also going to be, he was also an Andor too. So I don't know if it's the same mm-hmm. character or what, or just the same species. But uh, uh, hey, we got to get that fucking merchandising out there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what kid would buy it because he looks kind of like like one of them like smaller versions with the the what do you call them uh, uh, centipedes from Men in Black, kind of just like a smaller version. Oh, there. he he looks yeah, Babu Frick looks like a uh, stuffed gremlin that got left in the microwave too long. Yeah, I I mean I don't know what what kid would kind of want that toy, but uh yeah I I mean so I'm excited for that I'm excited for that cameo that's my favorite cameo there um yeah and then you also see uh Mandalorian he's talking to a uh, uh the um, rebel uh, pilot that we saw from the last season the one that pulled him over gave him tried to give him a ticket mm-hmm. uh for speeding <laughs> um you kind of see that there that character there um you kind of see him there yeah so. Uh, it's a kind of a shorter trailer. It's only like a minute and 43, so it's a shorter trailer here mm-hmm. that we see. Um, so we're probably going to get a, a bigger uh, trailer uh, sometime in the future uh, that we're going to get one. Um, when is season three coming out? Does it have it? Uh, let me see here. Uh, the premiere date for season three is March 1st. Yes. March 1st of this year, so very soon. Yeah, very, very soon. Yep, 
season three. Yep, it has it right okay. here. Yep. Season three, and, March first. Yep, and uh, yeah, and we have a great uh, uh, new uh, rotation of directors coming on to uh, uh, work on this season. We of course have uh, uh, Filoni and uh, and John Favreau working on this. We have Bryce Dallas Howard who's directing an episode. Uh, we get Rick Famuyiwa, uh, Famuyiwa who uh, directed episodes in both the, the first and second season. And we have Carl Weathers making uh, his directorial debut on this season. Mm. And we also have uh, Lee Isaac Chung, who directed uh, Minari. And we also get uh, Peter Ramsey and Rachel Morrison, who are directing episodes of this. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Very, very cool. Um, all right, so that was The Mandalorian, season three. Um, we're going to be moving on to discussing Scream. Um, this is Scream, f- what, six? Six now? Scream six. Scream six, Ghostface takes Manhattan. Yeah. <laughs> so now we just have to keep him on a boat for like an hour and 40 minutes. And then <laughs> not show up to New York until the last 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Scream six, just a year, basically, after Scream five came out, uh, they're doing Scream mm-hmm. six, uh, which Scream five uh, pretty much opened, I think, to good reception, did pretty well. Um, I wasn't really that big on the movie myself, mm-hmm. uh, with Scream 5. Um, I think you liked it a lot more than I did, um, I think. Yes, I did. I, I was a big fan of Scream 5. I, I loved, uh, I loved the turn that, uh, Tyler Gillett and, uh, Matt, uh, Beninelli Ulpin did with, uh, with that story. Essentially, going back to basics with, uh, why, uh, why Scream worked so well for the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, I just thought it was a little just too much callbacks, too much, you know what I mean? Do you remember mm-hmm. uh, the first scream or the other screams again? It seems like they're doing a little bit that here because it seems like you see a moment where you see like the trophy room, I guess, of the of the killer mm-hmm. where you see it's collected all the different uh, costumes of Ghostface through all the different, you know, uh, uh, mm-hmm. different killers and this whole memorabilia from all the other different movies. Um, mm-hmm. And I also thought, you know, the stuff, the making the connection between one of the characters, I guess, well, I guess I can, can I say it? I guess it doesn't matter. I guess people, most people probably yeah, have seen Scream 5. Yeah, spoilers for a movie that came out a year ago. You know, uh, that one of the characters was the daughter of the killer from the first movie, Billy, I think was the, mm-hmm. yeah, the killer from the first movie. Yeah, bi- yeah she's Billy Loomis's uh, illegitimate daughter. Yeah. Um and then she was like seeing his visions or something. She was having like <laughs> seeing, <laughs> seeing his seeing his like poorly CG de aged ghost. Yeah. Um so yeah. Um that was to me was just yeah, I was like, okay, this is a little weird. Um uh so yeah, I mean I but I did like some of the actors in it. Like Jenna Ortega I thought was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought she was pretty good in it. Um and I do like as well uh Jasmine Sylvie uh Brown uh, as well. I do like her. Mm-hmm. I thought she was good. But I think another issue with that movie was that they were also like every character in that movie was the Randy character, the 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 meta mm-hmm. humor, like every character knew about it, like, you know, when before that was regulated to just one person, now it's like everybody. Mm-hmm. Um Well that's because that's because I think, you know, us as a us as a culture, I feel like a lot more people are a little more uh, savvy with films. It's like uh, become kind of the cool thing to be able to like talk about these things and break them down in a way that is very similar to what Randy did in the original franchise. Because Randy was basically that nerd character that we saw in a lot of those uh, teen dramas back in the day. Mm. Yeah. Um, and... I wonder if they're going to just constantly just pick off the original cast members. Like if they're going to, cause in the last one, uh, David Arquette died who played Dewey. This one, do you think Courtney Cox, do you think, you know what I mean? Do you think Gail as Gail is going to die? I would say yes, but, uh, it's kind of hard to say because a, uh, a, the screen movies are always kind of have a revolving door and constantly keep you guessing of, who's actually going to die in the film up until like their kill scenes. And so that's something that I thought uh, uh, the guys at radio silence did really well with the last movie, especially with all the fake outs, like the scene where uh, a Dylan Minnette's character bites it and just the build up to that, I thought was one of the best things in that entire movie. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a possibility, um, that because if they're going to do their own trilogy here of the new screen movies that they constantly just pick off the, the OG cast members. So you have David Arquette died and then this one, Courtney Cox will die. 
Um, I know that Nev Campbell is not going to show up in this one. Uh, there was an issue mm-hmm. contract wise uh, there that she didn't, you know, she had some issues there, so she's not going to be showing up in this one. Um, so yeah, and then you also have Hayden Panettiere, who's returning from you know her character who got referenced in Scream Five. She was in Scream Four. Um, mm-hmm. is Kirby? She's coming back in this one, um, which is pretty nice. Um, do you think that? Because it seems like are they going to do the thing again of where the killer is a fan of like the other killers and they're going to kind of say kind of mm-hmm. make references back to the other movies again? Because that was kind of the whole thing with Jack Quaid's character and uh, you know that he was like a huge super fan of Scream and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, do you think? Yeah, we're yeah with that film that was talking a lot about uh, kind of the state of toxic fandom, which I think is a really good touch, especially uh, commenting on that, the divide between like elevated horror and the classic uh, slasher movies. And I'm thinking that with this film, we are, are going to get a, more of an expansion on that. And also kind of like how media tends to radicalize people or Something that I'm very curious because this was actually one of uh, Kevin Williamson's original pitches for uh, Scream 3 before that whole production kind of kind of fell to shit, where it was going to be revealed that that uh, Matthew Lillard survived the events of the first film and was like creating a cult and starting to train new ghost faces, which I thought was a really fascinating idea, but that ended up getting on the being left on the cutting room floor and being left in a draft never to be filmed mm. do you really see matthew lillard's character training people his goofy ass do you really see that <laughs> as goofy as he is do you really do you really see that <laughs> maybe maybe not matthew lillard's a good enough actor to pull that off i think yeah maybe he aged up maybe he you know got wiser <laughs> over the years you know he wasn't the the dumb 26 year old high school student that he was in in <laughs> scream one uh so yeah maybe they'll do that um hmm, okay so yeah um if you had to guess out of the cast who who do you think is going to be one of the killers if you had to guess <laughs> Ooh, who do i think is gonna end up being the killer so this is let me pull up the um, cast on screen here so this is so yeah because we have yeah we have courtney cox we have uh melissa barrera jenna ortega jasmine savoy brown and mason gooding all returning from the previous film I think they're pretty much like not going to be the killers, but some of the new uh, actors we have, we get a uh, Dermot Mulroney, we get uh, uh, Henry uh, Cerny, who was in, who was the dad in Ready or Not. We also have uh, Samara Weaving, Tony Revolori, Jack Champion, who we just saw in Avatar, and we have Josh Segarra, who I'm going to guess right now is the killer because he played Prometheus on season five of Arrow, and I do not trust that motherfucker. Mm, that's a good pick uh that is a very good pick um yeah uh hmm. i think it's gonna be him and samara weaving that are the killer this one yeah that's also good i was i was gonna that's also a good pick samara weaving uh aka uh margo weep uh margo robbie aka uh jamie presley margo phobie yeah aka margo phobie <laughs> uh that's also, yeah that's another kind of good option there um, also, you have to. I don't think, of course, you got to exclude Jasmine Savvy Brown and then Mason Gooding, you know, who are also returning from the mm-hmm. the uh, the fifth movie there. Uh, but I think those are two good picks: some more weaving and Jace, uh, Josh uh, Segarra. I think that's a, those are two pretty good picks um, that, that you have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is coming out March tenth. So yeah, really soon that this movie. Pretty. Much. When did the, the fifth one came? The fifth one came out also in March. I think the fifth one did come out March of uh, 22. Uh, no, it came out January uh, 2022. Ah, January. Okay, so yeah. Hmm, yeah. All right, so yeah, we're going to be doing that one. Mar- uh, Scream 6, March 10th. Um. All right. Our next trailer, it's going to be kind of, this is really more of like a teaser type thing. It's not really even a full all that much trailer. But I am happy that this uh, show is going to be coming back and coming back pretty soon. And that is Invincible, um, which gorgeous animation, by the way. And I saw somebody uh, said that this is done yeah, by they, a yeah. yeah, they upped that budget between seasons because as much as I love the... I love the first season of Invincible, that animation did get a little rough at points where it was clearly showing the uh, limitations of its budget yeah 
Um, so this definitely, I mean, you see like, you know, the budget on this, like you said, has increased a lot and it does look really good. Um, and the way they move, the way they kind of the animation is, um, we love this show. Um, when we reviewed it, uh, I was a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought it a lot of really great stuff. This is a, the, uh, based mm -hmm. on the comic of Robert Kirkman, uh, an adaptation of that. And I heard they're, they're trying to maybe do mm -hmm. possibly a live action version of it, which, I don't think it's necessary, but uh, you know, that's yeah, that's kind of unnecessary, especially just how good the uh, the animated adaptation is, and so much of what Kirkman is going for with uh, the writing of Invincible, where he was doing essentially uh, like his take on a lot of our superhero media. Mm, yeah. Um. So yeah, I I mean I'm excited for this to be coming out, and it's gonna be in. We have still have to wait a little bit late 2023. Um. <laughs> so just wait a little bit. We get a little, a little bit longer for this, but I think it's worth it. You know, considering you know how, probably how long it takes to animate something like this. Um. And you know. Uh, and yeah. And yeah. And we kind of I do feel like we want more trailers like this. It doesn't really giving us any plot details. It's just showing all of the work that goes into creating an animated show and giving credit where it's due to the animators and the and the writers of it, which I don't think we do enough in terms of talking about animation as a medium. Because mm -hmm. I feel like there's still this kind of stigma that animation is just something for kids. Yeah. And this is definitely not something that probably you, you would want to show kids. <laughs> I mean, they opened the first season with a dude getting his head crushed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... This is yeah, definitely not something uh, that you kind of want to show kids. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, I'm definitely excited for this series. I think it is a great animated series. Um, and yeah, it takes flight. Yeah, like they say, 2023 that we're gonna be seeing it late there. Um, hopefully, Mark has been getting in the gym because he took a big fat L. <laughs> hopefully, he's been working out, trying to get yeah, in the gym. Dude's been get yeah, dude stays getting his ass whooped every episode of that first <laughs> season up until the finale where it where you know he didn't win against Omni Man. Omni Man just got too tired of whooping his ass. Uh, um yeah, great yeah, and great also, you know, speaking of you know, Omni Man JK Simmons, great vocal uh, voice performances all around too. Is yeah, also the yeah, the entire voice cast is phenomenal in this, especially because uh, for a huge chunk of them, people like Stephen Yoon, like uh, Gillian Jacobs, uh, uh, a lot of them don't really have a background in voice acting. And we can clearly see that, you know, it is not the easiest thing to do in the world, especially having to give an entire performance without one of the best, one of the biggest assets of any actor, and that's their face, having it to do everything emoting you have to get all the emotion out with just your voice which mm -hmm. we saw when we watched uh, what if how some of the voice acting that got really rough yeah very true so yeah invincible season two coming out this year um all right um we're also going to be doing shazam shazam 2 uh fury of the gods this is the second trailer uh, for the movie to come out um, and this movie's come out relatively pretty soon. Um, so, uh, people were kind of like, you know, where's the next trailer going to be? Cause this movie's going to be coming out. <laughs> um, looking at this yep, trailer, March um, yep. March 17th, uh, the movie's going to come out in theaters and looking at the trailer, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, I don't know. This seems like kind of, I, I really liked the first movie a lot. Shazam. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, thought it was really good. Uh, but this seems like it is going to have a lot of kind of sequelitis to it too much shit going on mm -hmm. uh where it seems like it's it, it, it's gonna be way 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 just a lot kind of going on it's gonna make it film kind of like with the first film kind of like smaller it's gonna make this film feel so overwhelmed with a lot of stuff kind of going mm -hmm. on um what it, what's some of your thoughts on this trailer yeah me i kind of see what you're talking about where it is uh where one of the strengths of that first film was in kind of its much smaller scale. It was more of a personal coming of age story with, uh, with Billy Batson, who was played uh, by Asher Angel and Zachary Levi. And here, I think we are kind of getting a little bit into that kind of sensory overload where too much stuff is happening. However, I have full faith in both the, uh, <clears throat> this entire cast and with uh david f sandberg who yeah he had this in the film for a long time up until uh because it was debatable whether or not shazam was even gonna get a sequel 
when it first came out. It was it did well for Warner Brothers, but it wasn't the giant smash hit that they were that they were kind of hoping for. So just the fact that we're getting a Shazam sequel, I think, is very is very cool and very interesting. And just one of the last remnants of that older guard of DC. Yeah. Um, and performance wise, it'd be interesting to see how this movie does. Cause a lot of people go like, well, what's the point? Why well, go see this movie <laughs> because they're going to reboot the whole thing anyway. So what is the real purpose of going to see these movies, uh, this movie? And people were saying the same thing about mm-hmm. Aquaman too, as well. It's like, well, what's the point? You know, like, you know, everything's kind of going to be rebooted anyway. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how this movie performs even though people, because I think generally most people really like the first movie, um, it didn't do mm-hmm. too well in the box office because sometimes with these DC movies, it, you know, they're up and down performance wise, mm-hmm. and some there, pay yeah, for there's it. a yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of baggage just by how how this franchise got off to its start. There's a lot of baggage, especially uh, uh, critically. Mm, yeah, so. Um, so it'd be kind of interesting to see how it performs, but yeah, I, I think, you know, he's, he's fighting dragons in this and, you know, there's a lot of magic kind of going on. It seems like the whole city, like, you know, the whole city is playing Tetris and shit. Like they're, they're doing that. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just like, yeah, it seems like there's a lot kind of going on in, in, in this sequel that kind of, it's like, it's not very much like the first one, which I understand, you know, you want to go a little bit bigger with the sequel, you know, because now you probably have a bigger budget because they were like, Hey, you did pretty well with the first mm-hmm. one. So we're going to give you a little bit of a bigger budget, but sometimes that's not always good because we saw that kind of that's how i kind of felt about deadpool 2 where deadpool 2 is like you mm-hmm. know it, it had a you know it's like they had a much bigger budget because of the huge success that the first one was but it's like okay you added in all these other characters and it's like well it kind of takes away from what actually made the first one kind of good you know just because you increase the budget and add in mm-hmm. all these characters doesn't really make necessarily it better if yeah. just because it's bigger um so mm-hmm. yeah um so march 17th coming out um shazam fury of the gods um it is coming out um all right 